Hi, I'm Bill Corcoran Jr. This is the On The Stacks Podcast. Oh yeah, whoa, look, they can never keep me down, I'm going, and if I ever fail to snow, I'll go again. I never quit, because I know that every loss may lead to another win, I'm going no. I did. I'm. It's another one of those things in life that really does come down to attitude because obviously no one wants their business to be flooded. That is a nightmare. It's messy and it's hard and you have to stop doing what you're doing because there's water everywhere and things are ruined and it's just so wild. It's a whirlwind. But um, I'm, I'm a positive person. So I knew that, you know, it's I'll figure something else out. Today, I'm chatting with Natalie Lynn, owner-operator at Counterpart Kombucha and co-owner of The Canning House. This episode is brought to you by Burn, the fitness company behind the Today Show-approved Burn Board. If I'm being honest, working out can be a real chore, especially as a new dad in desperate need of sleep and cardio. Burn is founded by NEPA native Jimmy T. Martin, and his Burn Board offers a low-impact core and cardio experience unlike anything I've done before. They have hundreds of on-demand workouts that are great for beginners, seasoned athletes, and out-of-shape podcast hosts who love supporting small businesses. My wife and I use it pretty frequently throughout the week, and it's honestly a great way to burn a ton of calories without burning a ton of cash. Not to mention, it's a great tool for skiers, runners, wrestlers, and hockey players. Jimmy is offering all On The Stacks listeners 15% off when they use the code STACKS15. Visit theburn.com today to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15 at checkout. Again, that's theburn, T-H-E-B-R-R-N.com to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15. It's time to get on board today with Burn. This episode is brought to you by Blue Door Financial. Blue Door Financial will help you save money and reduce taxes to live a fuller financial life. To learn more, visit Blue Door Financial online at bludoorfinancial.com. That's bludoorfinancial.com. What's up, podcast episode 108 of the On The Stacks podcast in the Blue Door studio. Welcome to the show, Natalie. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited, Bill. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, Brought some some booch with you today. I did. I'm trying not to say the word because I never pronounce it right. So what's the official pronunciation? So it is kombucha. But I've heard just about every variation possible of that word. And whatever you call it, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. Kombucha, kombucha. Yeah. Kombuki. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> kombuki. kombuki. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I bet there's probably some people that are like super confident when they say that too. They're probably like, oh, let me get some of that kombuki. For sure. And you can't correct them. No. Because they're roll like, with it. yeah. Yeah. Every time. Just like, yes, that's what this is. Yeah. Whatever you want it to be, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So, so let, let's take it back a little. You're from Bloomsburg. So you're originally not like really like in the close, I say, NEPA area. Yeah. So what brought you here? So my sister, Tara, my oldest sister, she had moved here after college and was working at the radio station. And she's one of my best friends, one of my biggest mentors. And I I kind of followed her. (laughs) I followed her here. Yeah. So sorry. So you you were in Bloomsburg. When did you come here? So I came here officially four years ago. I've been in NEPA officially for four years. Okay. But I was and had followed her here ever since I was like 18. I would come stay with her sometimes. So I was really familiar with this area. And I would even skip school and come to the mall sometimes skip up here. Skip school? Which was really fun. Oh, oh my yeah. God. So, all right. So you skipped school. I did. And came here to, the, to like the Wyoming Valley Mall? Yes. And it felt so exciting. <laughs> you know, like, oh my gosh. Because our mall was so small. And that mall just seemed like this big you know, amazing mall. We had the big crazy mall. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's as cool as it, it was. It's not. No. That it's poor mall. It's not the same. I know. Oh my God. Poor malls everywhere. Seriously. I'm a mall person too. I love the whole vibe of being in a mall and getting a pretzel and like doing all of that. It was cool to go and hang was. out. That was like a thing to do. It was. It was like a, sta- it was like a staple. Yes. A staple thing to do. It was. All right. So, so, so take me back to, uh, to, you know, high school and, you know, it, the theme that I've seen throughout your life is like you've always been creating things. Yes. So, you know, what did you do after high school? Yeah. So after high school, um, I was pretty certain in high school that I wouldn't be on a college track. I was actually pretty certain of that my whole life. I just didn't uh, feel any pull towards anything professionally um, in that regard. 
And I always really wanted to see life and then kind of figure out what was going to happen from there. Uh, So after I did graduate from high school, I moved to California. I drove out there in January of 2007. Gosh, this feels like a long time ago. (laughs) And this was before GPSs were in cars. And this is, this is, I had a triptych from AAA, which was like a 15 page, um, you know, printed direction document. Oh my God. It's like, like, like MapQuest. Yeah. It was old school. So you like, you like MapQuested it to, I did. To California. So how, you were 18. Yeah. And you just said, I'm just going to California. I'm going to California. By yourself. That's what I did. Yes. And my parents, you know, I've thought about it a lot lately too. My parents were just, they always knew who I was and who I was just never changed. I was always the same from when I was a little kid to basically right now. So who were you? Who, who was yeah, I? What I were just, you? I sort what, of, who are you? Yeah. Who am I? <laughs> this is going to be existential. Yeah. Um, you know, I just, I have my own path and I can't see it. It's not well lit, but I know when I'm on it, like I just kind of have this track there and they saw that with me too. They let me do a lot of things that I look back and think, wow, okay. But they just sort of weren't ever worried. They never even asked, you know, pushed me on college, um, when I said I wanted to drive to California, they were kind of like, okay, but X, Y, and Z needs to happen. So my dad brought me to AAA and, you know, they would they would help me. So they helped you get the official directions. They helped me get the official directions. And um, yeah, I drove out to California, lived there for a while, and I still love it dearly to this day. So what was the plan? Like, all right, so you're, I'm going to, I'm 18 years old. Yes. I'm going, I'm going by myself. Yes. What, what were you planning to do? I didn't really have a plan. I had visited California a couple months prior and through my sister, Tara, who I've already mentioned here. Shout out to Tara. I had, shout out to Tara, you're the best. Um, I had met a friend of hers when she was going to IUP. He lived in California. She made this introduction and was like, hey, my sister wants to move to California. She's going to come visit. Can you show her around? So I did that. I flew out there. And he showed me the incredible city of Los Angeles, which I just love. And I met a friend through him who happened to need a roommate. And so I decided I'd find a job. I wasn't worried about that. Worst case, I just show up at one of the, you know, hundreds of thousands of businesses and say, hey, I'm Natalie and I'll do anything. I'll work hard. (laughs) Yeah. So like, I mean, you're 18 years old. I mean, how did you have the courage to just pick up and just go to California? It's like, okay, so you had an introduction, so you kind of knew somebody, but still like you're literally going all the way across the country in 2007 when like, you know, there was, I don't know, there wasn't even smartphones then. And like, yes, there weren't. How did you have the courage just to pick up and go and, and do it? It's, it's an interesting thing. I, I'm not scared really. I do, I, it didn't ever occur to me that I needed to be courageous. It didn't ever occur to me that it was a crazy thing to do or that it might not work out. It's, you know, what's the worst thing that happens? You know, it doesn't work. I get lost. You know, it's just like, I'll figure it out. I just wasn't really worried about it. Yeah. So, so tell me about your time there. Oh, it was so fun. Uh, it was also crazy because, you know, you, I was very far from my family, which I'd never done before. Um, but it was just such a complete adventure. I ended up working, I was an assistant for a hairstylist for a while. That was really fun. So I worked in her hair studio with her. I was a nanny full time for an 18 month old little boy. That was also a wild experience to have at 18. (laughs) I did a lot of side jobs, different events, catering events. I was kind of all over. I did some extra work also really fun. I loved all of it. So were you just kind of just trying different things just to kind of learn about yourself and kind of just figure yourself out? Yeah. And that's really been the theme of my life. It's just kind of keep trying things, keep doing things. So what what did you learn most when you were out in California? I learned most that I'm a bit of a homebody, which I never knew about myself until I really left. I didn't realize how much I would truly miss my family and how homesick I would be. I also learned a super valuable lesson, which is that all of the things I didn't fear and all of the ways that I told myself, what's the worst that happens or could happen? Um, it, I found that out. 
So yeah, like, I, I tried it. And, it's like, okay, I did do these things. And probably nothing, nothing crazy bad happened, right? No, nothing bad happened at all. It was just all this crazy adventure. And looking back, I'm happy, so happy that that gets to be a part of my story of, of things. It really just made me feel even more capable of doing whatever right. I wanted to do. So how long did you spend out there? I was out there for a year. And and then what did you what when you decided to move back like what was what what was that like like what what triggered that? So this is gonna sound so small town, but it's just the truth. The Bloomsburg Fair was coming up, and I really wanted to come home for that. You can't miss that. <laughs> no, it's the Bloomsburg Fair. It's like the most. I mean, I love it. If you're from Bloomsburg, you definitely deeply love the fair, and my family's no exception. I really wanted to come home. I talked to my multiple bosses at the time. And basically the one job I had as the assistant, she said, you really, you can't go. We need you. And I said, I've been working here for a long time. And I just like even three days, I don't care. I'll fly in the middle of the night. I'll spend one day there. I'll fly the next day. And uh, she said, no bueno, no bueno. And that really just something happened where I started to feel really more locked into where I was in California. And at the same time, I had seen a little, a picture of my little sister and she looked like she grew six inches and was now this adult person. And it was this combination of things. And I was like, that's it. I am going home. I'm, I'm going home. I'll so be back. So California, this, okay, I'm going so, home. So this was going to be just be like a temporary coming home for the fair only and then yes. going back to California. Yes. But then, but then like <laughs> boss was like, yo, can't yeah. take, you can't go to the fair. Yeah. No fair for you. It's just a fair, you know? So Natalie said no job. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. So you literally picked back up and moved. You I moved did. back home at that yeah. point. Yep. I talked to my roommates. I was there for a couple of weeks. I planned it out. Um, and it was also, I just, I missed my family so much. And then, you know, not being able to leave when I, I wanted to just visit them because everyone has such separate lives and everything with my family, there's all these babies and it's harder for people to come to California than one might think. So I um it was just a combination of things and I always knew I'd go back to California and I'd go frequently. Yeah. Right, and so I love it for the visiting. I'll visit California forever. Yeah. I'll be a hundred and I'll be off the plane like, yes, I'm here. Flying this time, not driving. Yes. Right? Yeah. Flying this yeah. time. For sure. All right. So so you, you drove back. I did. And then I uh, all right, so you came back and what what was the plan? I had no plan. I really had no plan. It was kind of back to the same drawing board that I was really comfortable being at, which was, okay, here we go. Again, let's try more things and do more things and live more life. And um, I certainly did do that. I spent a good couple of years working a lot of different jobs um, and also not working. So I also was traveling a lot and I was making music with friends and traveling with them and writing songs and journaling and painting and just doing so many things where'd you travel i was traveling i actually did end up traveling i did drive back to california oh, okay but not to live just to visit with friends <laughs> okay. we had a road trip um california many times spent a lot of times in philly went to nashville florida um so a West lot Virginia. lot music scene in the yeah. music scene yeah electric okay. dance music okay yeah. So All I was right. dancing a lot in those days. Too. So it's like a rave party. So fun. Yes. Like outside? Some sometimes. Sometimes okay. warehouses. Uh the people that I was making music with, my friends, they did a little tour. So I went on tour with them. That was so much fun. Like a legit tour? A legit tour, like a real tour. And what were you doing? Well, I was dancing. Just okay. to be honest, you know, I wasn't doing much of anything besides dancing, but I did record a song with them that they would play. So that was epic. Like one of the stops was in California. So we all drove to California and the song was playing and we're in this warehouse and it was me singing it and it was just felt dreamy. Like, oh my gosh. It's like you legit sang on this song with this. Who, who, who are they? The name's Designer Drugs. They were together for years and years and years. Now they've moved on, grown and kind of gone into different professions, but they made some awesome music. Shout out, guys. Yeah, that is really cool. <laughs> it was fun. All right, so so you did a little, you did a little bit in the music scene. Yes, you know you lived the rock star life, a little right? Bit. And uh, drove back and forth a couple times. Yes. And then what did, what did you kind of do after that? So I started to settle a little bit, focus on just a couple hobbies at a time, and I was waitressing and got more into the flow of working and saving rather than working to travel 
or to take on a new hobby. Uh, and at that point, I was, yeah, it was always just kind of back to this place that felt safe. Like, I couldn't explain it to anyone. And honestly, no one ever really questioned me. Like, what are you going to do with your life? Everyone yeah, was like just when are, sort like of, when are you going to grow up kind of thing? Yeah, like no one ever like Everyone was just so encouraging. I feel like I might be one of the luckiest people like ever for that. You know, my dad, I remember talking to him and he would say just the most encouraging things. If I would ever be like, I just don't know, like what should I do? Oh, you'll know. You'll figure it out. You'll get there. Like, okay. Yeah, cuz I feel like that can be a really big judgmental thing. Yeah. You know, somebody, you know, in your case, like you said, you didn't go to college. And I think Mm -hmm. our generation, like you had to go to college. Yes. Right. Nothing against it. Like. For sure. But you didn't. And you experienced a lot of stuff. Yeah. In a short amount of time. And like I said, like there was probably like, like you said, that you're very lucky because I feel like a lot of people would probably were judgmental. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But like you didn't have that. Yeah. My guidance counselor was. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to set you a meeting with the Army people and the Navy people and the Air Force and you can sit with all of them and they'll help you. They were trying to help you find your path. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not like, worried I'm, about that. I'm good. I'm kind of like on it, I think. You know, I just, I want the journey and not looking for the, the finish line really. Yeah. All right. So, so then what did you, you kind of sort of figured yourself out, right? And like, mm-hmm. what was it? It ended up being kombucha. It, that's that ended up being the thing and it makes sense looking back if I could have a time machine and there's this straight line that just runs through everything which is when I was younger the things that I liked to do it's just let's mix these things together and see what happens it didn't have to be real food it could be anything just a toothpaste and shampoo just to kind of see and experiment and play so it makes sense that I ended up with kombucha but it certainly wasn't planned you know I never thought oh I want to start a kombucha business right even like a year in I didn't think I was doing that I was like oh I'm just doing this this is just what I'm doing right now so like when did you experience it for the first time like when when and where did you try it so I had my first kombucha when I lived in California and I do wish I could remember who told me about kombucha because they changed my life. Yeah, and yeah, for real. It's, yeah, really, truly, I just don't know who it was. But someone had said to me, oh, you should try kombucha. It's really good. It helps with headaches. And I had tried one, went to the store, picked one up. And I was like, OK, this is good. Like, I get it. This is nice. But then the same thing that just kicks me into every other hobby I've ever done. It's like, oh, I think I could do that. I think I could make that really good. Like, it's good. Maybe I can make it really good. And many years went on that I did not make it. It would be over five years. And then I did. Like, what what, what was that? What was that turning point for you that you said, you know, what, I'm going to like you weren't making it at all. No, not not even experimenting. Nothing. No. And then all of a sudden you just started making it. Yeah. Why? It's so strange. It was another thing that wasn't planned. I didn't think, ooh, I'm going to start doing this now. And then I did it. I had been talking with a friend on like a summer day sitting outside and had said, oh, I really want to start making kombucha. I really want to get into that. And we talked about it and that was it. On to the next conversation. A year goes by. I haven't made it. It just I thought about it. And it was a very cold December night. I had just gotten done waitressing. And if you have ever worked in a restaurant in December, it's crazy you're tired. There's so many people and holiday parties. And I had gotten a phone call and he said, I have the best surprise and you have to come over to my house and get it. I honestly couldn't even imagine what that could be. Like what, what is there that warrants this number one phone call? I went over and he had a kombucha and a scoby in a little jar, little mason jar. And he said, I was at my mom's house. She asked if I knew anyone who wanted to make kombucha. And I remember when you had told me that you wanted to make it. So I got this for you. All right. So the, the, the million dollar question, and we have one sitting here yes. on the table. Yes. So this is a two parter. Yeah. What is a SCOBY? And then obviously, you know, what is kombucha? Yeah. So a SCOBY is a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast, which is essentially all of the things that you don't see in the actual kombucha or generally in life. You don't really see probiotics or microorganisms. It'd be cool, but we don't see those. And all of those things together 
in a great environment end up becoming something you can see and they become this sort of mass of squishy amazing magicalness there's no other way to even explain what it is because it's just (laughs) this wild thing that exists yeah just a thing it is and it makes the kombucha you can't have kombucha without the scoby the scoby does all of the work it basically goes into what is a sweet tea and that sweet tea with its sugar and caffeine the scoby will metabolize all of that and turn sugar and caffeine ultimately after about two weeks into probiotics and it changes the whole thing the whole that whole jug yes so what's going on in this jug right now yeah so that jug right now is what i would say is kombucha starter which is kombucha that has aggressively gone to the point of almost vinegar so it's kind of a holding tank that's what's happening it would be happy in there forever maybe give it a little sugar now and then um, so you have to like feed it. You do. It's like a living thing. Yes. I am a steward of the Scobies, yeah. essentially, and yeah. watching them, feeding them. Yeah. Yes. The Scoby mom. Yeah. It's no pressure, but I am like responsible for the life of these, you gotta these keep, things. You got to keep that thing alive. I do. Yeah. I do. I do. All right. So so you go to your friend's house. Mm-hmm. You get the Scoby. Yeah. What happens next? It sounds so cheesy to say it, but I really remember holding it in my hand, and I think it had been because it had been such a long journey to getting there it was oh I heard about it now I'm drinking it now I want to make it now all of a sudden I have the pieces and the parts to do it but I was totally mystified I drove directly to the store I bought tea I bought sugar I bought a container and I made it that night that was that you're just like I'm doing it yes and I had when you make it there's multiple parts and I had set my alarm for 3 30 in the morning because by that point I thought the hot tea would have been cool enough to actually start making it. And it was. So I set my alarm. I went through the steps. And then I waited patiently for two weeks. This was the first batch. It was the first batch. How did it turn out? It was awesome. Was it? It was so exciting. As good as you expected? It was as good as I expected. At least for the first one. Yes, first like batch. for the first one. But I knew there was places to go. Like I knew for sure that this was a... A whole thing. Work in progress. Work in progress, yes. This is like legit chemistry stuff here. It is. Right? It is. Oh, it's very, it's incredible science and it's incredible nature. There's something that's so kind of magical about it. Also because there's such a long history of kombucha having been a part of so many medicinal um or used in so many medicinal ways and it still is like there are i have a friend who lives in seoul korea and they still sell kombucha there like as a health thing it's not like a drink it's like you take that if you're sick like an actual like yes almost like a prescription but yeah totally a kombucha prescription yeah yeah you should do that (laughs) there we go yeah all right so so you started making this and at, at this point it's a hobby yes right yeah and how did it progress and how did it, how did it become, you know, I know it's probably, uh, there's probably a big long story (laughs) to this, but how did it become what it became today? Yeah. How did you go from hobby to like a legit business? It's, it's interesting because the story is really just not the traditional story, especially now that I am more, I'm in business. I'm a business person. It took me a really long time to think that about myself or even about this. Um, but I had started it as something, it just excited me, like so many things had before, you know, just made me feel so happy and so good. Like, oh my gosh, I'm doing this thing and I'm making it and I have to take care of it. And as I was making it, I realized that I had been making a lot. So I had like way too much and I couldn't really convince people to take it. In my family, people were just like, this smells weird and this looks weird and we don't know what kombucha is. Now, at the time, in 2013, it was about a $1 million industry. So when you think of how large other industries are, that's so small. It wasn't well known. Yeah, it's very small. Yeah, it really wasn't well known. There was like one person dominating the market, and that's kind of what existed. And fast forward to today, it's I think it's on track to be a $2.4 billion industry. It's a big difference. In 2022, huge. Yeah. Huge. 
Yeah. I would have never known, nor would I ever thought, but here I am. I mean, I just, it was something happened there at the right time with me. I, I fell into it, but I'd made too much and I couldn't drink it. And of course I loved it. So I didn't want to like put it down the drain or anything. So I hopped on Facebook and said, Hey, I have been making this kombucha. Do you want any? And a lot of people were like, what is kombucha? You know, sure, I'll take it. Just really open-minded. So I had given out a couple jars. And then every single person had then come back to my Facebook page and said, can I get this again? Oh, by the way, my sister wants some. Could I get one for her? Like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. Now I have a, a thing. There's this whole kind of cyclical thing. And it's amazing. And we're all in this. And it, um, I just went out and got more jars. I went to Walmart and I got more jars and then I went to Staples and I bought more shipping labels and more colored Sharpies and I started posting it more, put it up for sale because at that point I was actually spending money on all of the things and that is how it rolled for a year. So people started actually buying it. They did. I had a little system in the Facebook group and you would order it on a Monday just by commenting that you wanted it. And then you would meet me in a parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a drug dealer or anything. No, yeah, yeah. it was totally fine. Yeah, totally legit. Yeah, I just popped yeah. my trunk. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was for a year, rain or shine. So like if it was snowing, we're still doing this, everybody, and everyone would still come. And it just sort of spread out. And before I knew it, people wanted a case at a time. And I lived in a third floor apartment and I'm just, you know, bringing these bottles down and it just kept going. Like I didn't, it's the weirdest thing, but I now, the community I now call the Booch Fam, which is all of these customers that I still have today who I met in a parking lot. People I didn't even know, people, their sister's cousin's best friend who found out and wanted the kombucha and I got to meet people that way like oh you're Alicia like hey it's so fun to meet you this is cool and then I got to know them they'd come back every week and it was some of the best people and they did it all I just I found something I loved and I kept doing it and everybody else did everything else it was unbelievable looking back I another really lucky lucky thing so you started this thing, like literally just selling it on Facebook, yeah. like just posting on Facebook. So you basically yeah. just started your business on Facebook yeah. and just said, who wants to buy this? And then, and now you're, you're jumping in your, your van and you're, mm -hmm. you're delivering this to people yeah. in parking lots yeah, and wherever they meet you. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty so, much. So why do you love it so much? It's the people are a huge part of it. I, I don't know that I would have kept doing it or done it any other way if it didn't happen like this. You know, from the start, from early on, I was approached by a number of people in my life. Like, you got to do this, and you have to get a hold of this distribution company and find a co-packer, and you need to get the labels, and you need to do all of these things. And I was just like, but then what would I do? Because that's what I do. I handwrite every label, and I make it, and I pack it, and I deliver it. And that's what I want to do. And that's certainly like a specific want because it's that's not for everybody. I have so much respect for people who think that way in business and just can streamline. And for me, I I wanted to do all of the parts. I really wanted to do everything. So how did, how did you like eventually grow it? Like how you know, obviously it grew tremendously since then. Yeah. Since you know you drive in the van and hands them out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I. Uh, I got in touch with a local health food store and I had brought them in some bottles that I had done with the two other places that I was trying to sell to. And I basically just said, how do people sell things here? Like, how does this work? I want to come back to you when I'm ready. I'm clearly not right now. I'm doing this in my house and, you know, this doesn't seem like the most legit <laughs> thing going on, but like, how do people do this? And there was an incredible manager at the time there named Victoria. And she told me, she's like, you're going to need this insurance and you're going to have to go through the state for this and X, Y, Z. And I made a little list and I checked all the boxes and I came back like I have all of it now. 
So mm. can I sell it here? And this is like your first like like what like wholesale deal? Yes. And they said, yes, you can. And that was the beginning. And then every other business I would walk into, it wasn't about how do I sell it with you? It was about, would you please sell this? <laughs> I <laughs> yeah. have people who want it. And I'm, you know, meeting people in now multiple parking lots and doing all of these things. The customers are there. But if you would sell it, that would be awesome. Then I can make more of it. And you can do that part. And it helps you and it helps me. And that was how it all started. So where was that store? That store was in Bloomsburg. Okay. Yeah, it was Bloom Naturally in Bloomsburg. I still work with them to this day. And yeah, they were my they were my start. The OGs. The OGs. I love them over there. Yeah. I deliver and I come in with my things. Like, God, it's been so many times I've walked in the door just, you know, about to fall over with all these cases and <laughs> yeah. still all these years later. And you're in like multiple states. Multiple states. How did that happen? Yeah. That happened. You know, I just wanted to. And it was another thing where I people did give me their opinion on that. And they had said, you probably don't want to actually be doing that and like driving that far. So and you were going to have to drive it like to another state yourself. Yes. Yeah, I did. I've driven this area. I've driven New Jersey, Maryland so much almost every single week for the past eight and a half years. I'm off in the morning. Every and I'm week. Just driving every week. Right now we're on every other because we're in a temporary space, but I just got curious about those places and thinking, you know, I wonder if there are other small businesses that are like these amazing small businesses that I can work with. So you and just I found them. You, how'd you find them? I just kind of drove around. I'd be like, oh, there's a coffee shop. And then I'd have my kombucha in the car and walk in and say, hey, I'm Natalie. I make this and I sell this and I'd love for you to sell it. So you literally like just it. you literally just walked into businesses and just yeah. handed them the product and said, "How can I sell this here?" Yeah, it's pretty much still what I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing has changed. Yeah, I it's that's really cool though. It's, yeah, it's just the way that I know to do it, and it's kind of the way that I I like to do it. And you built you built like a, a I'll say like customer base, fan base, following all through social media. All through social media. I wish that I would have been the one who thought of social media generally because it's just the most unbelievable tool for a business. I mean, you can not only find the right people, they can find you and then you stay in touch. It's like a dream. I remember being like 10 years old and I had met people through a local theater production that I was a part of. And I didn't have a cell phone. I was 10 and life was so different then. Um, and I remember it was our last show and I was thinking, wait, how am I going to stay in touch with these people? Because they're all grown ups. I'm a kid. These people were from all over. I'm like, they're, what if they move? I guess I could get their address, but then I'm going to send a card. And then, you know, I just didn't want to lose these people that I had made these connections with. And so I do truly wish I would have thought of Facebook or something like that <laughs> yeah. because it really answered, which, by the way, I have found those very people from when I was 10 years old on Facebook. There I you am go. Facebook friends with them now. Um, but it's the way of connecting with people and a way of being able to speak directly is just so amazing. I've connected and found so many amazing people and they have found me and it's just a place as soon as I'm there, and I know it's not all good, and there's downsides to social media for sure, but for me, it's such a happy place. Like, this is where my people are. Like, I found my people, and they have found me, and like, here we are together in this thing, and it's so cool. Yeah. I love it. So do I. <laughs> I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people just have a, a bad attitude sometimes about yes. social media. Of course, and I've said, this has came up, I think, multiple times in like other episodes too. Of course, you can go on Facebook and you can leave negative comments yes. or there's yes. there's always going to be those people mm -hmm. like no matter where you go. Yeah, it doesn't totally. and it doesn't even have to be social media. Like you can go to the store, you can hear people bitching yes. in line, you it's know, but just anything. Like, it's you know, everywhere. It is. It, it still is everywhere. But I just I, I like I'm I'm big into social media, too. And that's kind of how this whole podcast grew. I mean, it literally grew from a, a from a hashtag, which is actually wow. it was obviously the name of the show. Yeah. But if it wasn't for social media and hashtags like this wouldn't this wouldn't yeah. exist right now yeah it's you incredible. know and it's just like i believe in just 
being positive and yes, just building that community online. I think a lot of people, a lot of people don't understand that. And even mm-hmm. some, even some small businesses. Yeah, like, absolutely. They don't understand. They don't, they don't like fully take advantage of the power of social media. Yeah. It's, it's crazy to me. It is. Yeah. And I think what you had just said is a really big part of it, which is it's your attitude. You know, if you kind of go on there and you're looking for this or that, but when you create your own space on there and you look at it as being this amazing thing, which it really is, like to connect with people in real time all over the world is an unbelievable thing to do. Like we are living in a time of the future being a lot of things, but it's just so amazing. It is. I love it. It's a total game changer. It is. It's like you literally started your business. Like probably, well, like on your phone? like Yes, on my iPhone. And I'll, it was just, yeah. And the fact that you can communicate too with photos and videos and now, you know, podcasts with video podcasts, it's so cool. I would have never done, it just wouldn't have had ever happened if it weren't for basically Facebook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. All right, so 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 the, you you eventually moved out of the the third floor apartment. Yes. Where did you go like after that? But like production wise, like tell me a little bit about your your production. Yeah, so from there, what I did is I moved into a different apartment. Okay, <laughs> that was right. not three floors. Smart. That was really hard. Right. That I mean, it's already such a physically intense. Thing yeah, I mean, to look, do. look at this. Look at the jug. And they're heavy when they're full. It's heavy with just a few inches of liquid in there. Yeah. And I carry about probably 50 of those a week and dump 50 of them. It's so much physically that doing the stairs, that was just so crazy. All right. So third floor. Now we're in a first floor. I am ground level. Streamline. Yes. (laughs) We're we're streamlining now. Streamlining now. Yeah. I feel like you really understand me because it's exactly in my head. I'm like, yeah, look at me. Look at me go. I have made this. Whereas, you know, obviously the other people who are like, you need to do this and this. Like in my zone, in my world that I very much live in, that was a I'm huge I'm going to the thing. first floor. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. And I'm still living with it. But at that time, I had had my kitchen certified by the state. So I could legally do it that like way. Like legitimately in, in an apartment like you. Yes. That's a thing. Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, you can do it. I honestly don't think you can do it with kombucha anymore. At the time, the state didn't know enough about it. Um, now they do. And it's regulated, really so, regulated. So you got in at the right time, did, ground I got, level. I did, yes. Yeah, I was a, uh, I was, I was in there early. That's good. Kitchen. Yeah, it quickly just took over, and I wasn't really living there because it was just all racks and shelves and bottles, and it was so intense. So then I had moved to what was closer to being a real facility in Elysburg. It used to be an old gym. Uh, I used a large section in the back. I was there for a couple of years. Then I moved it to Drums, Pennsylvania, where I was for three years until a very large flood happened. Oh, no. Um, hot water heater was exploded for days. So I walked in on Monday and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to work. And I've got my apron on. And there was like four inches of water everywhere. Oh, my God. And the floor had fallen through and it was... That's why I'm in a temporary space. Bad news. <laughs> yeah, but my dream, my dream facility, dream home, true brewery is going to be happening soon. It's mm. in progress. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so you got flooded. Yeah. And that's like a nightmare. Totally. But um, now you just said you're you're you finally you found the dream spot. I did. I'm. It's another one of those things in life that really does come down to attitude. Because obviously no one wants their business to be flooded. That is a nightmare. It's messy and it's hard and you have to stop doing what you're doing because there's water everywhere and things are ruined and it's just so wild. It's a whirlwind. But um, I'm I'm a positive person. So I knew that, you know, it's I'll figure something else out. I'll find a new place one way or another. This will be for the best. And I just keep moving forward. How how do you how did you or how do you stay motivated through things like that? I think it comes down to being a part of who I've always been, which I do majorly attribute to my family. Um, I come from a long line of dreamers and believers and people who've worked really hard uh, to get wherever they've they've gotten. I have parents uh, who are just 
de- very dimensional people. <laughs> My dad is uh, retired now, but an attorney by day and then a drummer in a band and, you know, painting at night and, you know, kind of this mix of people. Uh, but I've, I'm positive by nature, by nurture, and um, my paternal grandparents had come over here during Nazi Germany, lost family members, friends, belongings, pets, you know, so much of their life was disrupted at this young age. And by the time I knew them, there are these people that live in this nice house and they're making us breakfast and they're living this life that was, I can't even imagine how hard to create. Like, how do you stay positive through that? Like, how do you get displaced as a refugee, come to a new country and you still get up every day and you have a family and you're, it's, it really was, I always was aware of how amazing that was. And then also how amazing it was that I didn't have that. I was just born and luckily into a family of lovely people into a life that I wouldn't have to go through that so at the end of the day like no matter how bad anything is it's just not that bad if my heart's still beating and I'm still around like there is a new day coming so your your parent your grandparents yes came here from Nazi Germany they did wow they did I know it's really it's influenced uh, my all of my family all of my sisters and for a lot of other people which there are so many whose grandparents had come over here or parents Um, And it's just so influential because you really have a perspective that's very big picture. Like the worst day I'll ever have in my life couldn't ever compare to the worst day they had. I have such opportunity. I have this whole life I get to have. Like I just get to have my life and I get to live it and do things and experience life. And I've always just felt super lucky for that, like just to be a person. (laughs) <laughs> just to be a human being is pretty amazing. Like the sky, water, animals, insects, like just this total wonderland. And the worst thing, yeah, the worst thing that could ever happen to me, just it can't be as bad. Can't no. Be bad. Wow. Yeah. I, I can't even imagine. Like you said, they were just completely uprooted. Yeah. And came to America. Yeah. And young. Like my mom um, at the time, I think she was 10 years old and she was just moved just one day ten. abruptly moved 10 to live with this family who she didn't speak the same language as them and she helped them she cleaned and they housed her and it's just it's so mind-boggling to think of that being the reality and something that I I was 10 I was 10 and I was outside you know running around making mud pies and doing all of these things and it's just It is a huge, huge perspective shift. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. For sure. I'm like, I'm like speechless. Yeah. It's just, it's changed. I don't think I I would certainly not be who I am if it weren't for that. I think that's been the, the, uh, the driving force for me is I just feel so lucky as a person to be alive that my grandparents were able to come here and meet and then have my dad and then he had me and it's just sort of this really big picture awareness that's never not there wow yeah unbelievable (laughs) wow thanks for sharing yeah of course all right so all right so back to the flood you got flooded yes and this is kind of how we got off on that little story there but i think it's so important because it really puts the whole thing your whole business your life your story everything in such perspective yeah so the flood of your business is probably, probably one of the worst things that probably happened to yeah. you. Yeah. You know? Oh, it was hard. Yeah. I wasn't in there like, oh, this yeah. is going to be fine. Yeah, it's but... okay. We'll just, we'll just sweep the water out of the way. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. a bit, kind of a problem. <laughs> the floors needed to be cleaned. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> Haven't mopped in a while, you know? <laughs> so, all right. So, so now, so you're working on this dream location. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. I'm, I'm so excited. It's been eight and a half years of, which I, I like this way. It's my natural way. Mm-hmm. If I don't want to do something, I'm like a dog that doesn't want to go on a walk. You know, you just, I'm dragging. So it's, you know, I have the momentum. I am, if I'm moving in the right direction, I know it. And um, it's taken a long time 
to get to the point that I'm, I'm going to be at where I can hose down the walls and just have pallets on pallets on pallets, stacks, 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 on stacks. Yeah. stacks and, of booch. Yes. And I'm, I'm really excited. I was never really ready before either. I really was hesitant about moving forward pretty much every step along the way. Even when I went from handwriting the labels, it took me until my fingers just wouldn't go like anymore. until you got these <laughs> yeah like, until you, like so you used to like handwrite all this yeah i used to buy shipping labels i can't remember the exact dimensions but like regular avery shipping labels and then i had different colored sharpies so i'd write like natalie's in purple and then the flavor and then kombucha and i was it i mean it got hard i was spending hours and hours just writing out these things <laughs> yeah. and that was even hard when i switched to getting a printed label that was, I was just like, oh gosh, but I love doing that part. You know, I <laughs> yeah. kind of like the, I don't know. I like the hard way. I guess I just do. Yeah. It, it has more <laughs> uh, meaning. Like after it's done, like you felt like you really felt like you, you created yeah. it. Yeah. I remember making the Facebook post actually announcing that I would no longer be handwriting the label. And you were like sad, but happy. <laughs> yes, right. And, yeah. And looking back, like, I don't know that anyone else felt the way that I did, but I really went in there in multiple paragraphs about how much I've loved writing the labels and it means a lot to me to do it. And it feels so personal. And it's, it is really funny looking back at that and so many other things that it all had to happen when I either physically couldn't do it anymore. Or I was just, I was ready. It was a and gro I'm ready growing now. pains. Yes. And I'm ready. I'm ready for a new space. I'm ready for garage doors. I'm awesome. ready. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. So when, when you get in there and you have like pallets of this, I expect a photo of you sitting on them stack style. Yes. You know? I will 100% do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. Good. In fact, that'll be the first thing I do. <laughs> awesome. Yep. Very cool. All right. So also all along while you're doing this, we also have the canning house. Yeah. Which we didn't talk about yet. Yeah. So how did the canning house all come about all while you're doing the booch? Yeah. So I, so many amazing things have come into my life through the kombucha. It has just been, I've met such amazing people. Obviously it's become my profession, my career. I'm now a professional kombucha brewer, which is so funny to me still. <laughs> um, yeah. And one of the things that had happened and, it has happened over time where people reach out to me uh, for the kombucha, for their business or their restaurant. And I was on Instagram one day and someone from the powerhouse eatery had sent me a message and said, hey, we're looking for a non-alcoholic beverage to put on our menu and we know you're local and we'd love to carry it. I'm like, wow, I didn't even have to go in and with my bottles. They DM Natalie. you and we're like, we <laughs> want your product. Yes, it was so cool. And so I went in and I brought my bottles and the person that I had been talking to would, was Connor, who would then turn into my business partner and my life partner. Yeah. Shout out to Connor. <laughs> shout out to Connor. Connor, just the best. And uh, we made the sale. You know, it was done. They were going to, they were carrying the kombucha. And as soon as we met, it was just like, whoa, we found our, this person. I mean, we're so alike and we're so different. And it's this great kind of yin and yang. Uh, and it didn't take us long to kind of hop on the opportunity of taking the canning house. Uh, the space in the building was available. And we'd been together for, I don't know, maybe six months. <laughs> and we got this opportunity. And it would be the first time I would never go into business with anyone but him. That's for sure. I'm used to being my own Doing it all, Everything. writing the labels. Yes, yes. I'm used to that. And we have a really good balance. It's really been a wild experience, but it was something that I kind of always wanted to do. I thought about it like many a, like, times. Like a restaurant? like a re like a Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Many times I'd think, ooh, this would be so fun. Because I grew up and my family is just like the most food obsessed people like ever. I mean, it's unbelievable my mom's entire life is food my sisters they're just what they do it's everyone's about food and I've always loved it and it's always this thing that is just one of my favorite things I love to eat I love to create things to eat I love everything about food so it seemed like a natural thing 
And it was also just kind of always in the back of my head that I would love to do that. So you got you guys got this opportunity. Yeah. And like I, when it came up, I think you guys like put like put it all together like really fast. Really fast. Right? Really, really fast. Well, like what was that experience like? It was so crazy. <laughs> I was so crazy. <laughs> I honestly cannot believe that we did that. Yeah, I mean, I kind of heard a little bit about it from Connor's episode. Yeah. But I want to hear from your perspective. Yeah. And in and, and your end. So like what was it like? Yeah. Well, he has he was born and raised into a family restaurants so he really had a deeper understanding of what it was going to take and I'm over on the side like oh this is gonna be so fun <laughs> and we're gonna paint the table yeah. pink and you know I just had this very visual part that I was enthusiastic about and we were in there mm, how long did we I think we did everything in two months everything in two months we did the menu the hiring renovated did the layout we did every single thing and opened those doors in two months and it was just the crazy well we thought that was the craziest thing that would happen but <laughs> <laughs> we would see in 2020 that it wasn't but it was so wild I mean it was so it was just wild but I like that it's the same thing it's like I like that that whole essence of oh I have to paint this whole thing that's gonna take me 14 hours and I'm gonna do it I'm just gonna do it in 14 hours straight and I'll stop for a water or a banana, but I'm going. I like the challenge. And that was a challenge. So it's like the journey. Yes. For you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about the journey. Because, you know, we all know where it ends. We all know, like, at the end of the day and at the end of our lives, there's a start and there's a finish. It's the in between the juice. That's what I like. The booch. Yeah. The booch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you guys put this thing together in, yeah. in two months. Yeah. And this is like end of 2019 right yeah or beginning of 2020 i forget i forget the exact date or time that you opened but i know it yeah. was like right before the pandemic it was right it was yeah yeah we no one could have ever ever known can't that predict, can't predict that happen. stuff yeah but that was a real real mind bender i mean at, at, there's there was a divide of a lot of people who are just like oh my god i'm not going to work tomorrow like work isn't tomorrow or oh now i'm working from home or, you know, what are my kids going to do? They're not going to school. And for us, it was just this huge screen that was, how do we keep these people employed? How do we keep our employees having jobs? And then how do we keep these businesses going? How do we, as businesses that are opening doors and seating people at tables, how do we survive this? So it was the major... For all that I thought it was in those two months of building it, it was, without exaggerating, a million times harder. <laughs> it was just like yeah. the most intense two years of any possible idea that any of us had. Is it going to be, you know, a, a pasta box? Are we going to do a veggie box? Are we going to start juicing things now? Are we doing peanut butter eggs? Like anything we could make, anything we could sell, anything we could think of. It was such a wild ride. It was just anything and everything. Anything, anything and everything. And we just, it was every day. There was a point where I remember Connor and I looked at each other. And we were like, how many days have we been working? Because it's been many. <laughs> you know, there's been no day off, no second off, no, no nothing, no, no time other than survive, 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 survive. And we did it. And we kept people employed and by the skin of our teeth we are here still here we're still here i love because it because of amazing people like you bill yeah truly well only because i bought the nft you know i mean that is pretty yeah. amazing <laughs> it is pretty cool that you have that yeah yeah i love it it is That's really awesome. good we love that you have it we yeah. talk about you all the time do you yeah we're like bill has that <laughs> one yeah. you know it's always throwing that out there. yeah yeah all right so you guys you guys made it we did so like what's 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 new at the canning house anything Ooh, the canning house the canning house we're always doing something new i think what's so exciting about the canning house what i love so much about it and the thing that i always like wanted if i was ever going to do a restaurant is we have a team of people it's so diverse just it's amazing honestly our team is awesome it's it's people who constantly want to do something new or try to use something they've never tried or make something that's never existed. And it's just this exciting kind of thing that goes on in there. Our head chef there is 22. 
Diana. She's so amazing. She is just so hungry for learning and making and experience, experimenting. And she's just also a true delight. It's just everywhere you look in there, there are people who genuinely really like it. And we have our spring menu coming out. So that's fun. That is. Yeah. We have people that really care and want to be there. Yeah. And we're a young restaurant. You know, when you, now that I've been so submerged in the restaurants, which I am at this point, I've gotten to understand a lot of the other parts of business that I obviously with the kombucha, it was never so much on my radar until it had to be. But when you open a restaurant, it's all about the P&L and the bottom line and the payroll and all of these things. I'm like, okay, I have a lot to learn. Challenge accepted. Yeah. So those are things like you didn't know much about? No. no. How, did, how did you learn? I learned by being really thrown into these things. I mean, hey, there's a meeting and you're going to run it. Like, hmm, okay. I've never met with a, you know, food provider, but I'll do that. And I've never sat down and done a payroll, but I'll, I'll do that. And just a lot of real rusty times there for me too. It's like, oh, numbers, <laughs> no. I just want to make things. Yeah, but I've gotten yeah. better at it. And it's helpful to have a team of such awesome people that kind of still, like, even though I'm not, you know, mixing this with dicks in the back in the canning house, they're doing it. And I love that. Yeah. Like, yes. Keep doing it. Keep mixing things together and see what they taste like. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Very cool. Well, I, I, enjoy, uh, I enjoy coming there for a meal. We always love to see Especially you. the brunch. Love brunch. Love, love the brunch. brunch. I love brunch. I just wish every day was brunch all the time everywhere. Yeah. I love seriously. Brunch. Yeah. We, I'm always on team. Can we have brunch like Saturday and Sunday? Because we only do it on Sunday. Team brunch. I'm on. Yeah. Team brunch. Team I'm, brunch. All, I'm all for team brunch. If I get that shirt, you have to wear it. And then I'll be I'll, like, I'll Bill be the fir- I'll be the first purchase. Consider yes. it already sold. Yes. Right now. Yep. I mean, you have to make them now because I know. you Risk. said it here and everybody's watching and listening. So. Yeah. And it was really your idea. So. No, it wasn't. Thank it was, you. It was yours. Was did it? I say it? I think you did. I, I feel like it was the energy. So we both. It's, yeah. It's split. 50-50. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? Um, what about the NFTs? I mean, you guys doing anything new with that? Yeah. We have so many is there more stuff coming out sitting okay yeah. so is this like a secret no no oh, okay. it's not a secret well, it's, it's not more now. just like a... <laughs> thanks bill yeah um, spoiled yeah. spoiler alert um it is we have a bunch and we're kind of figuring out like what we want to do with them and we've been thinking because like, i'm of... ready to buy i know right you're like yeah. at this point obviously you're our you're like yeah our i'm watching our favorite right. i'm watching out yeah, there it's yeah. gonna happen, and we're gonna kind of merch it out and make some cool things that are unique to come along with them. We have some kombucha ones, just not quite sure yet how we're gonna do it, what we're gonna do, but eventually working on some things happen. behind the Connor scenes. Connor is like so, as you know, he, and he's I love on the Connor. Podcast. Connor is just great, and yeah. he has this brain that just absorbs everything, and then any moment can just push it out. He retains like everything he's ever heard and he loves technology. So the NFTs, that's, that's really all him. I love seeing them. I'm like, Ooh, that's great. It's exciting. I love the whole element that I love about everything, which is it's exciting that someone wants it and then it, then it's theirs and then we made it. And the story is, is yeah. What I love. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to that and the t-shirt and yeah. geez, what else? Um, by the way, we didn't. Um, I gotta pick this up for. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, making a racket with this thing. This yeah. is this is an important thing here. That is that is an important thing. That is my this, jambalaya stick. The jambalaya stick. Yeah. I guess I could have called it something else, but that just felt right because it is a Bayou classic. You know. What's that thing? What's that? It's what does that mean? It's just the brand. But I assume, you know, the Bayou, oh, okay. Jambalaya, yeah, 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 I right. could totally have made this up. That might not at all be for Jambalaya. But when I saw that and received it, I was thinking, that's a Jambalaya stick. So this is stick. like the big stirrer thing. Yeah. This is like what you make. Yes. That's how booch. I stir my brew. Yes. Like a witch in yeah. there. Using the stirring <laughs> and, and the stirring. cauldron. Yes. The big, yeah. the, the big cauldron. Yeah. All the green yeah. coming yes. up. Yes. Yeah. Smoke. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Scary stuff. Yeah. yeah totally. Yeah. That's how I get the sugar to... Um, to work its way into dissolving into the tea and i use that thing boy it's my old faithful i've had it for ever i think at this point and i do a lot of stirring 
a lot of stirring. A lot, yes. Yeah. Like 10 minutes each one. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Same. You know, I could easily get something that would stir it. Yeah, but, but why why some... make why make it easy? You no, like the hard route. I do. You like doing things... So do I, though. I... Yeah, it's you know satisfying. What? It's so it much is, more satisfying. It is, because like, you're like, you know, it's just, it, it's that journey of, yes. of doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's the doing. Yeah. We're doers. Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. We go from third floor to first floor. Just make yes. it a little bit easier. Yes. <laughs> Not like a lot easier. Just a little bit easier. Yeah. A little bit at a time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, what else? Any, anything else? Uh, anything else new coming up? You got the new facility mm -hmm. coming up. Yeah. Which is yeah. super exciting. I'm really excited about that. And where um, is it? Can you say? It's in, yeah, it's in Hanover. And it is uh, really not too far from here, like 13 minutes. So I'm still in a good 13. location. That's a, 13. That's an exact number. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 13 minutes. Well, it must be because if you knew it was 13. Right? It, yeah. yeah. It it, it, you timed it. Yeah. So it's super close. Um, also, just still conveniently located for deliveries because on any given day, it's like, okay, I'm driving to Montclair, New Jersey or Lancaster. It's nice to be here for that. I didn't plan that either, but... Nipa is such a great place to go like anywhere you want. We're so close to the best cities, you know, in an hour and a half, two hours, you can be New York, you can be Philly. Um, everything feels close and doable. There's an airport here. Not that I'm flying the kombucha anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Cargo <laughs> flights. Yeah. All the FedEx um, um, plane jumbo jet pick it up, you know? Yes. Yes. Um, so I'm really, I'm, I'm truly just so excited for that to happen it's a huge step and i know i have my work cut out for me because i have to figure out how i'm gonna do it yeah now you know? it's like legit yeah like more legit than it already was totally yeah like i have to figure that out yeah, yeah. Probably got some bills to pay now <laughs> yeah 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 and like in true in my in true fashion and in, in my true style here i'm gonna try my darndest to do it myself of course and, and that's what i'm gonna do yep. make sure you do it the hard way though yeah of course yeah, yeah. No, there will be no easy no. easy things why here, do that easy ways out yeah um but i'm excited once i have my my kind of dream space to do this i'm excited to play with more flavors because that's something i really like and i've been doing a lot of the same flavors for a really long time and it makes sense i love them and they they do well and people like them but I've always loved to like go out in black raspberry season and like pick a bunch and then make just a special batch. Like however many I have, I'll just make that much. I'm excited to do that again. And like in that space, special I'll have space. mini batch. Yeah. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. Like I'd have to pick so many to make a lot, but I could at least do like some. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, how do you find how do you find the time to do all of this stuff that you do? So I you know, yeah. between the restaurant and 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 the booch like it's a lot it's a lot it's a real lot it's it is a real lot i didn't know how much of a lot it was going to be so it's, it's like a lot, really a, lot. a lot it's like the most a lot it's, yeah. it's <laughs> there, i don't know if the, i could do anything that would be more a lot than, for me than these two things yeah it's it's really challenging yeah, how do you do how do you do it all it's just so challenging i don't you know i i don't do it all which is the great thing so we have um our executive team management, they're just so wonderful. Connor picks up like on the weeks where I have a lot of kombucha. This is one of them. Um, you know, I will label, bottle, brew, pack, deliver, invoice over a thousand, twelve hundred bottles this week. And I'm only one person. So I'm going to be there doing this a lot, which means I won't really be able to like take the meeting with the bread guy and I probably won't go over there and check on everything on Wednesday, but like Connor will do it. So we have a good team dynamic where we'll fill in a little bit. It still will stretch me thin because it's not like I just close the door and say, well, I'm at kombucha now. You know, I'm still on social and I'm still posting and, um, you know, still involved in the constant things that need to happen. Brunch. Brunch. brunch brunch has to happen more brunch <laughs> yes and then of course i'll work there you know on the weekends no matter what even if it's a kombucha week i'll be there on the weekends and hustle and bustle and bust tables and all those things so booch in the morning yeah brunch in the morning yeah everything yeah lunch yeah. i've just learned to sandwich my time like i just i used to be more of like i'm gonna wake up as soon as the sun rises and then work and work and work and work and work and then I'm done and then I'll go out and I'll do whatever I do 
do whatever else there is. And now I've, I've gotten better at turning things on and off. So some mornings I'll go to kombucha and I'll do two hours. I'll go to the canning house for four, come back to kombucha for six or eight, and then I'll go home. Or, you know, just kind of getting better at stopping and starting because I'm more <laughs> inclined to be... Zero to 100. Yes. Like if, once I've started, don't even think to distract me because then I'm, you know, the inertia is gone. But I'm getting better at, at balancing it. And I'm really thankful to have a strong team of people who know when I'm having a big week. Yeah. It's like, guys, I can't. I literally have to do thousands of bottles of this. Yeah. And or I'm not going to do it. Yeah. It's like, who's going to stir? Yeah. Who's going to stir? Jeez. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate the hospitality when I come to the oh. come for brunch. I, uh, it's, it's definitely the thing. We love it. We yeah. love seeing people. We love seeing people we know. We love, yeah. it's just, that's such a huge part of what makes it all feel cool and yeah. good and exciting. And it's just, yeah, that's the part where it's like your heart gets a little warmer. Makes it all worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, this, this, this is why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So social media <laughs> and how can our listeners find you, the kombucha, kombucha, potato, potato, yeah. and... The canning house. Yeah. Gosh, there is so much. Yeah. Uh, so for the kombucha, Counterpart Kombucha, at Counterpart Kombucha, on Instagram and on Facebook. And the canning house is the canning house. We also have a TikTok now, which is also the canning house. We have a Facebook as well for the canning house. And any other social media yeah. thing that pops up, Just, I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing it. Signing up. I love it. I'm Sign still trying to learn Snapchat, but yeah, I don't know. That's nah. like a little, I don't know. I nah, think too well for that. I don't know either. I think the TikTok is is a good. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. I've been having fun with that. Thank you for your support, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. We just the connect on there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh my god, look at all these likes. Yeah. Likewise, I have like I have like two likes. One is you. Yeah. You know, the other one's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a slow roll at first, yeah. I hear. So yeah. You hey, know. Every, everybody starts somewhere. Everybody starts at zero. Yes, and it's exciting you know? when you see anything else. You know, I don't have these grand expectations of. I'm going to open it up and something went viral. Yeah, I'm going like, to have a million views. and Yeah. The, you know, the iced macchiato just probably won't get there, but anyone to see it <laughs> the is iced exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, ooh, yeah. they saw it. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. Well, this has been great. This has. Thank you so much. This yeah. has been fun. Yeah. I appreciate you coming in and lugging the car, boy. Oh, yeah. Happy to do it. It got out. Never gets yeah. out. No. This is a field trip. First time in eight and a half years this thing's seen the roads. Oh, my God. I know. Field trip. Field first trip. field trip yep to here on the stacks, on the stacks. first time ever <laughs> i'm honored the scoby the eight-year-old yep scoby here it is. Yep. on a field trip yeah i love it yeah same oh, this is cool yeah this been, and and so but where can people buy Ooh. Your, your kombucha so a lot of places a lot of places it's scattered around in the local nipa area of course it's at the canning house uh it's at red leaf love the red leaf guys so much uh, it's at both Dallas and Wilkes Bear, Chick Chick Marketplace, Poor Coffee House. It's at Zumo's in Scranton. It's really scattered around. And Pink anyone else that wants it. And anyone else that wants it, you just let me know and I will be there <laughs> and I will have my bottles and I'll still start with, hi, I'm Natalie, because that's just what I do. Um, and then also uh, we do have a subscription that is currently not happening, again, because of the temporary space but that's going to be back pretty soon so we'll be delivering cases directly to homes again which is exciting because for a lot of people that are in different areas like the phoenixville area like in the philly area it's more of a drive for them to get to the place they get it so we'll just bring it there just ship it does it get shipped to their house we deliver it. oh you deliver it yeah we still and deliver it. <laughs> you're, so you're, you're trucking it down there yeah i listen to a lot of podcasts yeah i'm just you know listening yeah like to yours exactly That's how i've listened to so many of yeah. your episodes because i'm just always in the <laughs> okay. car okay I, I was wondering how you because you told me that you were listening to so many episodes and i'm like yeah geez like how, how do people have the time yep you know but i That's guess it makes how. sense the traveling yes totally i mean eight or ten hours in a car you can get a lot done like audible i've recently gotten back into that unbelievable I feel so smart, you know, like all these books I've been reading, I'm not yeah. reading them, you know, yeah. but yeah, listening. I'm listening. <laughs> I, I prefer listening too. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, definitely. You can multitask. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it's about. Awesome. Well, again, this is great. I appreciate you coming in yeah. and um, I'm looking forward to seeing what else you guys are going to do with, you know, the kombucha and canning house and the NFTs and. Thank you. Whew. 
yeah, it's only the beginning. I mean, Crazy. there's so many things we want to do, and this was really fun. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. All right. Natalie Lynn on the Sex Podcast in the Blue Door Studio. Thanks for joining me. <laughs>